Hello YouTube, I'm back again, the Historical Gamer here, looking at, um, going back to the Moneyball uh, replay season, we went ahead and we did April, um, now we're going to go ahead and do May. Uh, in the first video I talked a little bit about the pitching staff and how that was a key, I'm going to take a look at what happens here in the month of May, and then I'm also going to take a look at maybe some of the position players that were mentioned in the movie. Um, so, this is the second video of the Money Moneyball 2002 uh, replay. It's using the game Out of the Park Baseball 12. Um, if you missed the first one, go ahead and check it out. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get ahead. Uh, get ahead. Go ahead and get into this second video here. So one of the nice things about this um, game, as far as uh, simulations are concerned, um, and something that it really is well, just a, it's an excellent feature for anyone who's looking to do historical seasons and replays, especially if you just want to kind of see results and see how things played out and do things really quickly. You can go game by game, which I'll do in one of the later videos. So that'll be a longer video. But you can also go week by week, month by month. So let's go ahead and do the next month. We're going to do the month of May. As you see, it's simulating here. Now, it'll stop you depending on the... Oh, there we go. It just stopped me partially through the wet month. I got a personal message. So... Okay, so one of the things that's uh, really nice about this game is the fact that you can choose to have all historical transactions on, so trades and the like that occurred historically will occur in this game. Um, will also occur in will also occur in the game when they did in real life. So if you don't want if you want to do a historical replay, this is very valuable because trades and whatnot will happen exactly when they did in real life. Now this transaction was actually a pretty big part in the movie where the Oakland Athletics traded away uh, Jeremy Giambi for um, John Mayberry. Uh, Mayberry being a first baseman. Interestingly enough, they just kind of gave him away. Now in this this season here, I'm part of the way through May. I haven't gotten through the whole part of May yet. And I traded for Mayberry, who's hitting 221 with four homers. Um, we traded Giambi, who is hitting uh, 268 with five homers. Um, that's actually a pretty good. Those are actually pretty good numbers. Um, now, historically, Giambi actually was hitting 274, I believe. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, Giambi was actually hitting 274 with eight homers through just 42 games. I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty impressive start to a season. Um, there were some off, off the field, um, I guess disputes or whatnot. He was having a pretty good year for Oakland, and uh, they really traded him away. In this case, didn't really get much for him, um, and he was having a, a pretty darn good year with them. Uh, he had more power. If you look, he had eight homers through 42 games. In 2001, he had 12 homers through just um, 100 through 124 games. So I mean, he was having a much better year. Although the average was down a bit, he was still having a very good year with um, Oakland. Um, Giambi really didn't pan out though. The next year, 2003, was his last year in the bigs. So as far as a long-term standpoint, it looked like a pretty good trade. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and finish the remainder of the month. Um, he was certainly much more productive than the movie ever portrays. Um, another thing, and here we went ahead and finished May. So historically, May was the worst season for Oakland. Um, as far as the game is concerned, uh, the team at the end of May is actually doing pretty well. We're 30 and, t 30 and 22 through the first two months of the season. We're four games out of first... Um, but let's take a look at the wild card standings and see where we are. Obviously, we're not beating the Angels. We're four games out of first. So that mirrors re reality in that they were they were struggling. They weren't first, but a 30-22 and 22 record's a pretty darn good record, too. So I'm going to take a look at the wild card standings. And, yeah, we're still two games out of the wild card behind Boston. Um, this game gives you a bunch of little summaries, storylines, things like that. I'm not really going to pay attention to any of that in this simulation. Um... But, yeah, now let me see. Standings breaks down by month, too, I'm sure. So we're going to go to expanded standings. Um, click on Oakland. And let's take a look here. 
30 and 22, an amazing 20 and 8 home record. Not very good on the road, but 28 at home is pretty darn good. And a 16 and 11 record in May, whereas historically the team was only 10 and 17. So none of that beginning season funk that the movie shows. Um, realistically, things never got as bad, I wouldn't say, as the movie portrays in 2002, but it makes good Hollywood to act like the GM's about to get fired or something like that. Uh, one bad month doesn't get a GM fired. Um, but we're going to go ahead and look at the things that make this team great. Pitching. Holy cow, look at that. Mark Mulder is 6-1, and one and he's got a sub-1 ERA. That is ridiculous. Uh, 2001 was historically his best season with 21 wins. Um, Mulder really faded quickly after the early 2000s. He suffered a bunch of injury problems. But, uh, wow, 6-1, and one, sub-1 one ERA. Wow. Hudson is 7 and 3 with a 223. Zito's 4 and 2 with a 247. I mean, you have four pitchers here. Um, Aaron Harang moves into the number 5 slot. You have four. You have five starting pitchers here, although Harang's only started one game. You have five starting pitchers here with a sub 330 ERA. No one has higher than a 330 ERA. Um, I mean, when you have pitching like that, you're going to win. You're going to be a playoff team. You're going to be at least in contention. And that's, as I harped on in the last video, that is something that the movie missed. It just totally ignored that aspect and uh, ignored a couple other things, too. So uh, Scott Hatterberg, one of the more important characters in the movie, is having a decent start. Actually, no, he's having a terrible start to his year. So nothing like the real season for Hatterberg. Um, Hatterberg historically hit uh, 280 and had 15 home runs. He's not even close to being on pace to that. Um, and uh, another big thing that the movie did point out, I'm just focusing on this one on some of the hitters that the movie talked about, Carlos Pena uh, was dubbed as a rookie sensation. And while he had a decent year power number-wise, I mean, he hit seven home runs in a pretty short period of time, so he was hitting a lot of homers, but he was only hitting 218. I guess maybe I don't remember the early 2000s a lot. Maybe home runs meant a lot more than they do now. But someone who only hits 218 has never been considered a phenomenal hitter. Uh, certainly, you know, nice to have that kind of power. But when you only hit 218, you're not an elite hitter. So that trade, I, I think the movie probably overblew that um, a bit, at least in retrospect. Obviously, I'm looking at things with hindsight, and hindsight is 2020. So uh, Hatterberg not having the season he historically had, um, thus far anyway. And um, so far, let's see, actually, where is Carlos Pena? Pena is only hitting 191, so once again, not a very good hitter, although he does have eight homers. So, I mean, that bears out what re he really did in real life is he had seven homers in the short period of time he played with them and uh, hit 218, and here he's hitting 191 with uh, eight homers. So, you know, very good, especially for someone who's in his first full season in, in this game and in real life. But I think it's something that the movie probably overstated that trade as if he was the only good player. I think the, the player that the movie totally overlooked, surprisingly enough, was Miguel Tejada. You see there he's on the top of the statistics. I'll talk a little bit more about that in my next video. So if you did like this video, and I know it's a little bit short and there's a lot more to go into, but we've got several more videos to go here so still. Um, perhaps more if we make it to the playoffs like they did historically. So if you like this, uh, check out the next one. I'm going to be posting... Uh, Posting another one shortly, um, and uh, if this is the type of thing you'd like to see, please like and uh, rate and comment uh, and subscribe, of course. So um, that's going to do it for this video, and uh, have a nice day.